Hello everybody and welcome back to the Maniacal Mini. Thank you for joining us for another video. Today we are working on Gobsprack, the mouth of Mork. We are starting to work on the base now, so I got my cork board and his base, and I'm just gonna start working around to try and create some rocky cliffs for our swamp. So sit back, enjoy, grab your tools, grab your utensils, grab your paints, grab whatever you need, just grab a drink if you're looking to hang out, and we will get this tutorial started. So I have managed to get three layers of cliffs down, so now we are going to start super gluing them to the board. Um, just like this, super glue along the bottom. Uh, make sure you cover everything along the bottom because corkboard has a tendency to stick up um, in some spots because the super glue will actually seep into the corkboard. So just make sure you use a decent amount. And now that we have our cliffs in place, we are going to spread around some super glue on all of the parts that are uncovered. Uh, we're just going to grab a Q-tip for this. Just like I'm doing here, we're going to smooth it out all along the rest of the base, and that is going to set up for our next step. And now that we have a nice, clear, smooth super glue put down, we are going to grab some of our river rocks first. Those are the bigger ones, nice chunky rock pieces that will stick up later, as well as some ballast. That is um, some fine ballast just to seep into all of the cracks and crevices that could possibly be on there and create a nice uniform surface. Okay, so our final step here before we glue on all of our bits and pieces, this is just going to be a little bit of liquid green stuff. I know mine doesn't seem too liquidy right now, that's because my pot was open, so mine is more of a Play-Doh. But same purpose, we're just going to fill in all the gaps and the awkward looking pieces on that cork just to make it look like a more uniform rock face. So we are going to be moving into painting now. So as usual, as you can see, I did my Zenithal highlight. That is a white over black primer. Um, you can notice that I left on the shield from one of the Stormcast Eternals from the Dominion box set, as well as one of their spears. Um, I added some skulls as well as some other little things here and there. Um, but first thing we're going to start out with is Wildwood Contrast Paint. That is going to serve as the main wood color for our tree and the stump that's sitting right next to it. And we will coat those in a nice even coat. Don't pull on too much. You don't want it to look streaky or anything like that, which is or can be a problem sometimes um, when you're using Contrast over Zenithal. Um, so we're just gonna go nice and smooth and slow and take our time and enjoy this. Uh, we will be moving on to the next step in just a second. All right, so now we're going to start adding a little bit of color into our rocks and our cliff face. That is going to be Basilicanum Gray contrast paint. Uh, this is a really, really good rock color. Um, very nice, very um, natural tones to it. We are gonna go over this color in one more step after this. Thank you. 
Okay, so just to make this look a little bit more realistic, a little bit more natural, um, we're going to be adding a little bit of Agrax Earthshade over all the rocks that we did. This will add a nice tonal variation with some browns, um, and it'll make it look a lot more natural for the rock face. Okay, so now that we have our rocks colored in, we are going to do some texture paint. This is going to be Muddy Grounds from AK Interactive. Um, I highly suggest their line. Um, even if you just get the texture paints, their texture paints are absolutely fantastic. They have great coverage. They go on perfectly. They look so super realistic. Um, I really just can't recommend AK Interactive enough. Um, they're just such a good brand and I highly recommend them. Even just to try out, order a couple small pots and uh, see how you like it but we're just gonna be laying this down over all the rocks. We are going to be making kind of a swamp in the center there. Um, so we're just gonna kind of leave that area untouched as far as the muddy ground goes, but everything else is free game. Okay, so while our swamp step later will add um, the covering over this paint, so we're not really going to notice it, just for now I want to add a little bit of Plague Bearer Flesh contrast paint, um, and that's going to be just coating the swamp area that we're going to be putting down later. So I'm going to start in now on all these little bits that I added to the basing. Uh, we're going to start off with this Stormcast shield. The uh, color scheme for my Stormcast is kind of Spartan looking. So it's a lot of whites, a lot of reds, and a lot of golds um, and bronzes. So I'm going to start off with this Caesar Red Metallic from Green Stuff World. Um, it's a pretty good metallic. It comes off a little bit rose gold. Um, so we are going to deepen that down the next step. If you watch my Andrasta video, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but right now we're going to move into that antique gold. That's going to be the trim around. The antique gold is one of my favorite golds. It already has this kind of weathered and old realistic look to it. So it holds up really well when we start adding verdigris and rust and all that around it later. It'll make the gold pop out a lot more. So it definitely is one of my favorite golds. And we're also going to pop a little bit of that antique gold on the spear here. Uh, just the handle, all the metallics that you can see on there. We're just going to leave the blade um, and that leather wrapping alone for now. So I did this in two separate layers just so I can get a nice gold down um, around the rim of this face on the shield. So I'm just coming back in with a little bit of Caesar Red Metallics. Um, I didn't have to add this piece in, but I didn't want you guys to, you know, see that I left it and then wonder why I didn't color it in later. And so now we're gonna start darkening down that red metallic. This is going to be Blood Angel's red contrast paint. Just be really careful not to hit any of that antique gold. We just wanna deepen down the red that we had already laid down, uh, just cause that Caesar red, like I said, is, is more of a rose gold. Um, so we're just gonna deepen that down into a nice hearty red, blood red gold. So to get a nice quick leather wrapping on this shield, we're just going to be using snake bike leather contrast paint. Um, once we go over everything later with that streak and grime, it's going to tie everything together tonally. So I'm not too worried about it being brighter because um, it will deepen down a little bit later.
So for the head of the spear, we're just going to be using a quick Iron Warrior over the top of this. Um, I love Iron Warrior. It's already almost looks like it's pre-shaded, but um, it has this nice, rich, metallic, um, silvery, kind of like dark dirtiness to it um, that I really like a lot. So I'm going to be using that for the tip of this spear. So to now start on the skulls that are decorating the base here, there's uh, I think about three of them in total. This one I added, so I'm just going to do sepia ink um, to get a nice base color for all of these skeletons, and then we'll hop back in with a quick highlight layer in a second. So we're going to move into the highlight for these skeletons and we're just going to be using more gassed bone. We're going to be picking out the topmost ridges and uh, leaving the recesses alone. That sepia ink should have soaked in there nice and given us a nice rich dark bone color. Um, so this is just to get kind of the bright spots. We got a couple of these um, plants that are put that there's one that's attached to the skull um, and there's another one that's attached to the wall over there. I just went over those with Nazdrag yellow. Um, I figured that was the closest color match that I could find from actual pictures of these plants. Um, and then we're going to be moving into the greenery in just a little bit. So any and all green on this model, including this moss that's hanging down off the tree, um, as well as the grass that you can see sticking up between the tree and the stump, um, right by my thumb, um, and the plants that we just painted earlier, those are all going to be done in Creed Camo. Um, with the Zenithal highlight, that Creed Camo makes a perfect looking um, fresh grass color. Um, so I like that color a lot when we're doing Zenithal highlight. Alright, so now we're going to start laying that swamp gel down. Um, that is from AK Interactive. Again, one of their line. It's absolutely great. Um, when it dries, it gets this just deep, disgusting green color. I know it looks a little weird now. It kind of looks like a bright green and it, it just looks weird. I understand that. Um, when it dries, you're going to see a whole different color tone to it. Um, and it's really going to tie this whole muddy ground like cliff face piece together. So we're going to start working on that corpse of the horse that's laying off the branch of the tree. Um, I'm just going to lay down some, a quick pectum flesh wash. This is just going to sink into the recesses. It's going to give this kind of pinkish flesh tone um, over the zenithal highlight. Um, we are going to come in with a deeper red later inside of this. So this is just going to help uh, enrich those tones that we're going to try and reach later. Um, so this step isn't technically necessary you don't ever you know have to do this one but it's going to make it look a little bit better later and we're just going to come back in with that sepia ink that is going to be for the spine and all the little like hip bones and pieces that you can see um, inside of this horse and we're going to move on to the next step in a second Just like we did with the skeletons before, we are just going to pop on a quick highlight of more gas bone. Um, again, not technically necessary because we are going to be coming over with a lot of effects and another deeper red color in just a few minutes. So it's not technically necessary, but this will show through um, the blood layer and the um, red-ish layer that we're going to put down in a minute. Um, it'll still show through all that, so it'll give that tonal variation and that color difference that we'll be able to see, so it'll look really cool. So, And moving into that flush terror red, we're going to coat the inside of the rib cage, touching the cracked ribs that are on the side, and we're just going to use this to kind of set up that blood later. Um, so we're just going to be following the drips that fall down on this tree, um, just to kind of set up that deeper color later. So 
So I'm going to be bringing in black Templar uh, contrast paint. This is going to be the black contrast paint. We're just going to use this as the color for the horse um, or what was the horse. And uh, this will give a nice like slate gray color um, once it goes over that Zenithal highlight due to the white. Um, so it comes out with this really, really cool um, natural looking horse color. All right, so one of our final steps in this phase is going to be a dry, quick dry brush of sylvaneth bark all over the tree and the stump that's right next to it. I just wanted to add a little bit more tonal variation before we put on the streak and grime and all that other stuff in the weathering step later, um, just so we can have some more color difference and all that stuff popping through a little bit later on. And for the last little step here, we're just going to coat that little feather that's sticking um, to the side of the stump. And that's just going to be Pallid Witch Flesh. Uh, we will get into the, obviously, the tutorial for Gobsprack himself. Um, and we will start working on the vulture in the next video. So this is just going to be a basic tone for his wings. I'm going to make him a white vulture. Um, so that should look pretty cool with um, some kind of ghostly greens at the end. So right now I'm just going to coat this into the Pallid Witch Flesh. Okay, so as we move into our final act of this tutorial video, we are coding into our weathering stage. This is going to be AK Interactive Streak and Grime. This is going to coat the entire base, everything except for the mud and the swamp gel, obviously. Um, so everything else is going to get a nice liberal coat of Streak and Grime, and we will work that off in the next step. Okay, so we're going to grab a Q-tip and wet it liberally with some mineral spirits and we're going to gently start working off this streak and grime from the model. Um, just a little bit at a time, don't press too hard, you could work down to the bare plastic if you're not careful. Um, so just be very, very light, very gentle, um, use multiple Q-tips if you have to, don't be afraid of mineral spirits, we're going to dry it off later with a hair dryer anyway, so it'll flash off really quickly. Um, a little later on if we need it to, but we'll move on to the next step now. And we're going to come in with a little bit of corrosion texture. We're just going to be hitting the, um, the silver on this spearhead, as well as the red on the shield. Um, gold, it doesn't always corrode, um, so I'm not going to put any corrosion on it. Um, I'm just going to leave that for some verdigris steps a little bit later. So we'll move into our next step in a minute. So I'm going to add a little bit of this coagulated blood effect. This is going to coat the entire inside of the corpse, as well as all of the drops and drips that come down, um, that are dripping down the tree. We're also going to be adding a little bit later on that um, I didn't put inside the tutorial because, I mean, it's up to me really. If, if, if you want to do it, you don't have to. Um, but I added some that actually comes down the rest of the tree and the cliff face and kind of drifts into that swampy pool. Um, so you can add that. If not, we'll move on to the next step. So now we're going to be adding some moss deposits onto our tree. Um, this is one of my favorite weathering textures. Um, it just has this really, really awesome looking moss um, look to it. it. It's super realistic when um, it dries and um, you let it sit for a little bit. It'll, it'll look really, really awesome. It'll add a little tonal variation to the tree itself, which is always good. And what we're always looking for is realism. So we definitely want that on there. So just to add a little bit of variation to our base and our mud, I'm going to take a little bit of AK Interactive Fresh Mud and I'm just going to stipple it around the base just to get a little variation in tone, uh, make it look like there's some big fresh mud been kicked up um, all around the swamp. So we'll move on to the next step in a minute. Okay, so now it's time for some assorted tufts. Um, I got some swamp tufts from a local game shop. Um, a lot of people use tuft glue or super glue to put down their tufts. I'm actually going to use a little bit of our fresh 
muddy ground texture. Um, I'm gonna put that on the bottom of the tuft and actually stick it to the base. And once that dries, it'll actually like bind it to the base. Um, the same way a glue would, it just looks a little bit more natural. Um, so I prefer to do it that way, but however it works, it works. So we're going to start adding a little bit of the dark rust to our corrosion texture that we laid down a little bit earlier. It should be dry now. Um, this is more of a purpley tone. I'm actually going to go up the um, scale in all of them. I don't show all of them in the video. I only show the dark and the medium. So I do go up to dark, medium, light, and then a little touch of orange here and there. Um, but we are going to show the medium step. But I just wanted to let you know that I do go through all of them. And just to get some eyes on that medium rust, this is another part where I am just going to touch very, very little. Um, so the way I work my rust is I'll start out with dark rust over all of the corrosion. And then as I go up in the lightness of colors, I'll start to sparingly put it in certain spots um, so that it looks a little bit more natural. And we're just going to move on to one more um, weathering pigment in just a second. And our last weathering pigment and last step of this tutorial is turquoise oxide. I do prefer turquoise oxide to verdigris. I know they're two different things, um, but turquoise oxide pops a lot more on the gold um, as well as on that red and corrosion and rust. Um, so I do prefer the look of that turquoise oxide, but I mean, if you prefer the just, you know, random verdigris, um, you know, do what suits you. It's all about what makes you happy. So thank you guys so much for checking out this video and hanging out with me for a little bit. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and tune in for the next one and we will see you soon. Thanks guys. Bye.